Hello everyone and welcome back. So in the last video, we got our multiple life system working in the game. So we can we made it so when we lose three lives, the game ends and the ball resets and it's working pretty good at this point here. So that's good news. Uh, next, this video, what we want to start doing is actually creating a coin system. So when you destroy the bricks, the coins will fall and you can collect coins and earn extra lives. So I'm not sure if we're going to do this in one or two videos. I'm going to see how well it's going halfway through and if it's getting too long, we'll just split it into two videos. So let's jump right into it. First things first, you're going to need a coin. So go onto a website like uh, opengameart.org Org, I think, and get a coin that you can use or go to Google Image Search, but just be very careful about copyright if you do that. Uh, get a coin with a transparent background, put it into your sprites folder, and drop it onto the scene. Move it somewhere up where you can see it, resize it so it's a decent size. Don't want it to be too big, don't want it to be too small, just make it a reasonable size so it looks like it makes sense if it comes out of one of those bricks. And we're going to add some components to it. We're going to add a circle collider, 2D, make sure it's 2D, and check the box is trigger. I know Ben went over in quite a lot of detail what this is trigger means. I'm not going to do that, so hopefully you understand why we're, do, why we're selecting is trigger. Uh, but if not, just follow along. Next, you're going to add a rigid body 2D component so it interacts with physics. We're not going to make it get is kinematic, otherwise it will just sit there. And we can hit play and see what that's going to look like. So it becomes a falling coin, that's a decent size. But if you notice, there's immediately a problem when it falls down. A, it does not interact with the paddle. And B, as soon as it hits our lose collider, we lose a life. Well, that doesn't work because we don't want coins to be making us to lose lives. We want them to be having us gain lives. I am happy with the gravity scale, though, how well it falls. It seems like it falls at a, de a de decent pace, so I'm not going to play around with any of that stuff. So let's take care of that first problem right away and knock that out of the park. So since it interacts with our Lose Collider in a way we don't want it to, we're going to open our Lose Collider script. But before we do that, we're going to add a tag to this coin. And I've already created it here. So if you haven't, just go to Add Tag and create a tag called Collectibles. Uh, and then once you do that, actually click the uh, coin and add that collectibles tag onto it. And then you can just go ahead and turn that coin into a prefab right away. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and open that Lose Collider script. So right away, take a look at this on trigger enter 2D stuff, because this is controlling what happens when the ball interacts with the Lose Collider. But the coin isn't a ball, we don't want the coin to behave in that way. So there's a very simple solution for this. I'm just going to make an if statement and say if trigger.tag does not equal collectibles, then we are going to execute all of this code. Make sure to add the closing bracket at the end. And then we're also going to make a second if statement just to be tidy and say if trigger.tag does equal collectibles, spell it right, then, and add the right brackets as well, that would be helpful, and then what we are going to do is destroy trigger.gameObject, just to destroy that coin, because if there's a lot of coins falling, we don't want them to be remaining in the left side on the hierarchy over here. So let's test if that works. Watch that fall. And fantastic. It does not make us lose a life. However, it does dis disappear right away, which isn't quite the behavior we want to happen. So we can fix that simply by adding a delay to this destroy command. We do that by typing comma space 1f, which means destroy this coin, but only after one second has passed. And we'll just try that one more time to make sure it's working. Fantastic. It is, so that looks really good, and it disappears from the hierarchy, so if there's a lot of coins falling and we're not catching them, we are still in good shape. So that's perfect. From here, we're going to go and open the paddle.cs script. So if you don't have that open yet, go ahead and open that up now and we are going to start by doing a few things. 
So number one, we're going to have to keep track of uh, the actual coins. So add a public static boolean, and we'll just call it coin count. And the reason we're making a public and static is because we only want to declare this variable once. If we load up, when we load the second level, we don't this we don't want this to reset itself to zero, which is what it's set to by default. We only want it to set itself to zero the first time the game runs. And actually, to that extent, we're going to have to take this a little bit farther. Uh, so, like right here in the loose collider script, where we did this thing with this public static bool first level loaded, we're going to basically do the exact same thing in the paddle script. I'm just going to copy paste that boolean over here into the paddle script, then go into the start field, and we're going to copy paste this code over here. And then we can put, drop that same code here into our start. And over here, instead, where it says number of lives equals three, we're going to say coin count equals zero. And this is basically just saving us if the uh, game is restarting over, if we've lost and we're restarting it, we're still going to start with a default coin count of zero. Because, uh, as I said, this will only declare itself up here the first time uh, on run. After that, we need to redeclare it. And this is just our little trick of doing exactly that. And then one more thing under the lose collider, uh, where we have said first level loaded equals true. Uh, this is a different first level loaded. So we're going to say paddle dot first level loaded equals true. So just when the game resets, uh, that changes as well. So that's perfect. That will take in, ensure that we have the appropriate starting coin count at all times. Next, we are going to add a, another method over here, and we're going to at the bottom of the paddle script, and we're going to call this void on trigger enter 2D, uh, 2D with a capital D, and then put collider and name it trigger just like in the other script to make it very, very similar. And here we're going to say if our trigger dot tag is collectibles. So basically, if our paddle is hitting a coin and not the ball, we are going to do this stuff. So right here, what we are going to do is declare an actual value for our coin. We're going to call this, as you might guess, coin value. Int coin value equals random dot range. And what I'm going to do is put in just a couple of uh, default values here, 10 and 20, just to make the game seem a little more organic. That way, when a coin collects, it's not always the same amount, and it makes it a little more realistic that way. Cool. Making sense here? Uh, and finally, what we want to do is say destroy trigger dot game object and we don't need to put a delay this time because basically we want the coin to uh, destroy itself as soon as it interacts with our paddle and we can actually just just to make sure it's working we can do a print statement here and we can say collected plus uh, coin value yeah and we'll just leave it at that okay let's save this script and test it out again make sure it's working Oops, constant value of zero cannot be converted into a bool. What did I do here? Int coin count equals zero. Oh, public static bool. Bool is, coin count is not a bool. You probably spotted that before I did, but sometimes when you're talking as you're doing this, you tend to miss things. No, that is an integer, of course. That makes a lot more sense. Okay. There we go. I have one more error here. Script error on trigger enter 2D. Of course, I have to make it also a collider 2D. So a couple of little errors there on my part. My bad. But let's go test it out again. So what happens when the coin hits the paddle? I just caught it there, but it says collected 12. 
So nothing shows up here in the upper right corner yet under coins, but that's okay because we haven't actually told it to do that yet. But we know that the coin that we did collect is behaving properly. So next, let us actually make coins appear when we destroy bricks. That sounds cool. And to do that, we are, of course, going to have to interact with our brick script. So under here, we are going to have to declare a pr uh, private game object. I'll just call it coin. But right above here, we're also going to have to type serialize field, which makes us able to actually attach a coin to a brick in the inspector. So now uh, go to your prefabs folder and you're going to select all your bricks. So in this game's case, it's green, invincible, red, and yellow. And over here in the inspector where it's asking for a coin, we are going to give it a coin. We're going to give it the coin prefab and just attach that right on. Now you might be wondering, why am I selecting the invincible brick uh, if it cannot be break it broken? Well, that's because later when uh, we create the special purple block, we are going to be breaking invincible bricks and we want them to drop coins too. But for now, that is good. So next we're going to make the brick actually uh, spawn a coin when it's broken. So we're just gonna look for where it actually breaks under handle hits, here we go. So right before the brick gets destroyed, we are going to say game object new coin equals, and this is, if you remember from how we're creating smoke, this is basically the same thing. We're saying instantiate a coin that we're selecting that game object. We're gonna say transform.position. So create it at the same place as uh, where the brick just was destroyed. And now we have to say quaterian.identity. And finally, at the very end, as game object, semicolon. And now let's take a look at if that works or if I type something else wrong again. Oh, would you look at that? It works. So when we have break, bricks breaking now, they are spawning coins. And if we look in the console, uh, we see every time I collect one of these coins, we, it is giving us a value. We're not doing anything with that value yet, but it is working. So one more thing we can do, it sounds a little bit empty uh, when we actually collect a coin, a little bit boring. So let's jazz that up a bit. And in our paddle script, we're just going to add a, uh, again, well, this time we'll just make it public. We'll just say public audio clip coin sound. We will go back and add a sound for that coin to our paddle. Uh, it's my paddle. It's asking for a coin sound, so I'm going to go over here. And which one is it? Do I have a coin? Hold on, let me go grab a coin from my coin folder. Sound effects. So I'm gonna use this bell drum high, change that into a 2D sound, apply it, and now go back to my prefabs, go onto my paddle sound, and change this bell drum high, attach it on here. And at the same spot where we just where we collect our coins in our paddle script, we are now going to say, uh, if it is a coin, we're gonna say audio source dot play clip at point open bracket coin sound and give it a value of 1f and now let's see what happens uh, I'm typing something wrong here audio source play dot play clip at point oh I need to give it its transform dot position first transform dot spell it right position 1F. And let's see what happens. Oh, beautiful. Okay, I think this video is getting a little long, so we'll probably split it up into two from here. And yeah, we're up to 15 minutes already, so I'm gonna cut this one off here, and we'll look at continuing, uh, actually showing, uh, we'll continue this in the next video by making our coin 
score up in the upper right corner, add, and uh, when it hits a certain predefined amount, we'll actually make our player gain extra lives. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.